الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We seek Allah's guidance We seek His forgiveness We seek His love And we put our complete trust and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Because of that deep trust that we have in Allah We go to Him alone seeking protection from the evil thoughts that may creep into our minds and we go to Allah alone seeking protection from the poor choices that we have made in this life. I bear witness that there is nothing in this universe worthy of serving, of obeying, of bowing before, of submitting to, of loving except for Allah. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his last and his final messenger. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. Oh, you who believe, be mindful of Allah, be conscious of Allah, and be in awe of Allah. And the way Allah has a right that you be conscious of Him, and do not die unless you die in a state of submission, in a state of Islam. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدَ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا O you who believe, be mindful of Allah, be conscious of Allah, and always speak words that are appropriate, that are fair, that are on point. If you were to speak words that were accurate and, and on point, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless your affairs. And He would overlook your shortcomings and mistakes. And whoever obeys the guidance of Allah and His Messenger, then he or she is ultimately guided. وَبَعْدْ One of the things that you observe whenever it rains is that children, they want to go outside and have a good time. When the rain falls, children want to go outside and jump in the puddles. Children want to stick out their tongue and drink the rainwater. And children want to soak themselves just standing out in the water. And while that's how the children view the rain, the rain also causes traffic to slow down. And the rain causes our property to get wet. It causes us to get muddy. And many people don't like that. And so we find that many people are upset when it rains. And they get annoyed. If I don't want to sit in the traffic any longer. I don't like having my clothes get wet. I don't like having my shoes get muddy. And I think about, well, why is it there's such a different reaction between those who are young and those who are older? And I think one of the reasons is because those of us who are raised in, this, in the city life have become acculturated to the city life or city dwellers and city slickers. We have lost an appreciation for what is natural. We like concrete. It's easy, you can sweep it. We like things that, we become accustomed to things that are artificial. And so when things happen that are natural, it's windy or it's wet and the rain falls, it makes us annoyed that life is not the way we typically see it. And this reflects a deviation from the fitrah that we were upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us of the natural disposition. And the children, they're upon that. They rejoice and they enjoy the rain. And this is exactly what I want to speak about today, is to think about rain as a blessing. To think about rain as a source of joy. To think about rain as a source of happiness. And why do I say that? For anything that happens in life, for any topic that one can think about, we look to the Qur'an and we look to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to give us some insight in how should we think about that topic. And if we want to think about how, the, if we want to reflect over Islam's stance on rain, we look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and we see the beautiful story. One day he was standing with his companions and they were outside and they were exposed to the rain. And what did they do? Did they run inside for shelter? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, what he did is he unbut unbuttoned his garment and he opened up his shirt and he let the rain come in and get on his body. And the Sahaba, they looked at the Prophet Muhammad and said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you doing that? And he said that this is the first of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This has is, this is recently come down from my Lord. And what he meant by that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that the rain is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I want to harness that. I want to enjoy it. I want to taste it. I want to feel it. 
And the other companions, they internalized this. Abdullah ibn Abbas, عنهuma, the great cousin of the Prophet, who was a great scholar of Islam. One day it was raining and he told his servant, go and get my saddle and go and get my mattress and let the rain touch it. And like many of us would do, he looked at, the servant looked at, his, at Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, why would you do that? He said, don't you know the verse of the Qur'an, وَنَزَّلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَمْ مُبَارَكَ And that Allah says, and we have sent down from the skies a blessed rain. Says, I want to expose myself and my possessions to that blessing. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he loved the rain. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to make dua for, for rain. He used to gather the companions outdoors and have a specific prayer and a, and a, and a khutbah to bring about rain. And he would say when the rain would fall, Allahumma sayyiban nafi'a. Oh Allah, make this downpour be blessed. And why would he do this, Allahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because he lived a natural life. He saw with his eyes the blessings that rain causes for humanity and for the animals. And that's why he said, wanted to turn our hearts towards appreciating the rain and having a, a cheerful disposition towards it. And he said, Thintan ma turaddan. There are two things that are never rejected. He said, Ad dua aindan nida wa tahta al matar. He said that two things are never rejected. One is a dua during and after the adhan. The second is a dua that's made while one is underneath the water. This should give us some insight into how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu how much he loved the rain, how much he enjoyed the rain, how he cherished it and saw it as a blessing and a mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then of course we have the Quran to give us some deeper insight. In today's khutbah I want to mention three aspects related to the rain that the Qur'an delves into. The first is to think about rain as a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A really profound proof of His majesty and His power. The second is to think about rain as a reminder of the resurrection. And the third is to think about the rain as a parable for something deeper and as a parable for the revelation. And so we begin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants to, in hundreds of ayat in the Qur'an, He's trying to stir up the soul. The Qur'an is not a dry textbook that gives you just chapter 1, do this, 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 this. Chapter 2, don't do this, this, this. It is a book that has been composed with his words in a way that's supposed to awaken your heart. That's supposed to make you think deeply and appreciate the world around you. And so Allah says, أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ الْمَاءَ الَّذِي أَنْتُمْ تَشْرَبُونَ أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْزَلْتُمُوهُ مِنَ الْمُزْنِ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْمُنْزِلُونَ لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَجَعَلْنَاهُ أُجَاجَ one of the most simple, obvious things we do every single day is we drink water. But how many times do we not think about where the water came from? Allah says, do you not look at the water that you drink? You, know, you take a cup and you drink it and you might think that I, this is arrowhead water. This is sparklets water, right? And you associate some man-made brand as if it created the water. Allah says, are you the one who brought it down from the, from the rain clouds? Or did we bring it down? And then Allah gives us the insight into why this is so important to think about. He says, if we had desired, had we willed, we could have made this water salty. So then do you not give thanks? If you begin, if you just stop and you think, where did our water come from? You'll be reminded from maybe third grade biology that it came from the ocean. It's amazing if you think about it. You know, we alhamdulillah live by the ocean. We've all gone in the water and we all hate it when the salt water gets in our mouth. And we spit it out and we can't stand it and we try to protect our mouth from even our lips touching it. And Allah is reminding us, this salt water that you can't stand, this is where all the water that you have, it came from. This is where rain comes from. The rain, uh, the, the sun heats up the ocean and that salty water that you would never drink, it evaporates up to the sky. Allah, He sends wind that blows it over the land and then it falls down and you enjoy it and you say, this is nice and pure water. Allah says, had we willed, we could have made it salty. It's a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the same water that's in the ocean that's salty, when it falls on you with the rain, it is pure and it is enjoyable. Say subhanAllah, say alhamdulillah, enjoy that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He elaborates more on this connection between nature and water. He says in Surah Al-Rum, Allahu alladhi yursil al-riyaha فَتُثِيرُ سَحَابًا فَيَبَسُطُهُ فِي السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ يَشَاءُ So Allah says, and Allah is the one who sends the wind to blow the clouds. 
And then those clouds, they continue to blow until they begin to spread apart. And then Allah says, وَيَجَعْلُهُ كِسَفًا فَتَرَى الْوَدَقَ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ خِلَالِهِ And then those clouds, they begin to fall apart, they, they fragment themselves until eventually you see water falling from them. And then Allah, He continues, فَإِذَا أَصَابَ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ فَإِذَا هُمْ يَسْتَبَشِرُونَ And then, when that water falls upon those who Allah has willed it falls upon, you see them rejoicing. The fitra of humanity, of human nature, is to rejoice and to enjoy rain because it is the source of life. And that's why Allah, He continues, وَإِن كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يُنَزَّلْ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمُبْلِسِينَ فَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ آثَارِ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ كَيْفَ يُحْيِي الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Before the rain fell, what, are, what is the state of people? People are in a state of despair. We don't realize it. We are living in California, which is experiencing seven years of continuous drought. 362 weeks we have of drought, the longest drought in 20 years. We had, we had fires that were burning the land and burning houses just recently all over the state. We were in a state of, we are in a state of desperation for rain. And when it falls, those who really appreciate it, those who really are in touch with the reality of what it does, they rejoice. Yet those who are far away from the reality of life, they're like, man, why is it got to rain? I washed my car yesterday. I gotta go spend another $10. Or $20. Why did it rain? Now I can't, you know, whatever. Now I, my shoes are muddy. Why did it rain? Now I can't go outside and I was supposed to play soccer. People off the fitrah don't realize this is a blessing. Everything that you enjoy in life. The food that you eat every single day. Where did your apple come from? Where did your salad come from? Where did your steak come from? Where did your chicken come from? If the rain didn't fall on the ground, you wouldn't have apples, right? You wouldn't have lettuce. Right? You wouldn't have olives, you wouldn't have fruits and vegetables, you wouldn't have cattle, you wouldn't have chickens, they would have all died. And so then we are reminded in these ayat, as Allah says, He says, فَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ آثَارِ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how He brings the dead life, the dead land back to life. Look at it and enjoy it and then make a connection. That I need that, I benefit from that. And only Allah can do that. It's amazing when you look at the dry land. We live in California. We live in, in, there's deserts close by. You go in July and you just look at the land and you see how it's hard, cracking. Nothing is growing on it. You say, how can something come out of this? And then subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that the rain falls. And in a short period of time, everything is green. Short period of time and California produces so much agriculture that you could feed probably the entire country of the, of the agriculture of California. It's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one should be aware of and contemplate over. And so these ayat, they call, us upon, they call to us to stop and to look. You know, we are obsessed. We cannot get our eyes off the iPad and the phones and the computers. And Allah is saying, stop and raise your head for a minute. Look at the sky. Look at the wind. Look at the, look at the clouds. You know, when you were a kid, you probably did it. Our kids do it. They lie down in the grass and they look at the clouds and they say, that looks like a monkey. Right? And that looks like, you know, a house, right? And they're in touch with, with just nature. Allah is saying, look at it and begin to just appreciate it. How they're there, how they're moving, how eventually they get heavy, how then rain falls, how that rain causes things to grow. And begin to be in touch with the spiritual side that says we are part of this creation. And then that leads me to the second point that Allah says in the Quran about rain, which is rain is a reminder of resurrection. The Muslim's heart should never be far from remembering death and resurrection. And Allah says in the Quran, وَنَزَّلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً مُبَارَكَ فَأَنْبَتْنَا بِهِ جَنَّاتٍ وَحَبَّ الْحَصِيدِ Allah says that we, we sent down from the heavens, we sent down from the skies, a blessed rain. And that blessed rain causes all types of things to grow. وَالنَّخْلَ بَاسِقَاتٍ لَهَا طَلْعٌ نَضِيدٍ It causes plants to grow. And fruits that are in bunches, grapes that are in bunches, and dates that are in bunches, grow because of that rain. Rizqal lil ibad as a source of sustenance for humanity and for his creation. Rizqal lil ibad wa ahyina bihi baldata mayta. And we have given life to the dead land with that water. Kadalika al khuruj. And that is how resurrection is going to be. Be reminded 
that the same way the dead land, that nothing is growing on it, when water pours on it, plants come out of it. That you will be like this one day. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave us a hadith. He said that the trumpet will be blown at the end of time. And every human being who's alive will fall down dead. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will send down a gentle rain. And that rain will fall upon the earth until the bodies begin to grow out of the ground. And the trumpet will be blown again and we'll all be standing before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in amazement. When you see the rain and you see slowly in your backyard or anywhere else that this was dead land and now I see plants growing, now I see something, fruits growing, I see roses growing. One day when I'm deep in that soil and my body has disintegrated, rain is going to fall. And the same way this plant comes out, my, soul, my body is going to come out. And I will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'll be asked about everything I did. I'll be asked about everything I did that was good and He'll reward me for it. And everything I did that was wrong and He may hold me accountable for that. And so when you see the rain, don't forget about resurrection. And let it be a reminder to rectify your deeds. Because that will, there will be a moment that you will stand before Allah the same way that flower is standing before you because of the rain. And the third aspect of rain we'll speak about in the second part of the khutbah, أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ أَتَّائِبُ مِنَ ذَنْبِي كَمَلْ لَا ذَنْبَ لَا فَدَعُوا اللَّهَ The one who repents from his sins is like the one who is sinless. So ask Allah to forgive you of all of your sins. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatan wa salaman ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al haqqi li yudhhirahu ala deen kulli wa kafa billahi shaheeda My dear brothers and sisters, we are speaking today about the rain that fell yesterday upon us and we have inshaAllah many more rainy days ahead of us. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loved the rain. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he embraced the rain, he loved to touch it. The companions loved to have their possessions be touched by the rain. He would make dua for the rain. Your dua is accepted in the rain. And the Quran reminds us to reflect over the miracle of the rain. To remind us about the blessings we have in this life. To remind us about our resurrection. And third and finally, the rain in the Quran is also given to us as a very beautiful parable and a metaphor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنَّكَ تَرَى الْأَرْضَ خَاشِعَةً فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَاءَ اهْتَزَّتْ وَرَبَتْ Allah says, and from amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from amongst the signs of His mercy and His perfection and His wisdom, is that He made you see the earth when it's still. You, know, you look outside when it's dry and the land is still. And then when rain falls upon it, two things happen to the earth. One is that it begins to tremble and it begins to move a bit and two, it begins to grow. And so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us, He's telling us to look and appreciate that. And then He says, إِنَّ الَّذِي Indeed, the one who bring, brought the land back to life will bring the dead back to life. Indeed, He's able to do all things. What the ulama have mentioned about this verse is that literally it, it's there in that the land that is dead is given life by the rain. But the parable that's deeper behind it is a parable about us and our creation. If rain gives life to a dead land, then Allah is saying that the rain is like revelation. The ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa it is revelation from the heaven. And that revelation falls onto this earth and it hits not the land, but it hits the hearts of the creation. The parable is what? That rain is like revelation and the land is like our hearts. And so thus, we should expose our hearts to the revelation the way the land needs to be exposed to the rain. And if you expose the land to the rain, it will shake and it will grow and it will benefit. When your heart is exposed to the revelation, it will grow and it will benefit and it will be awoken and it will shake. And this is even if your heart is dead. Even if somebody's heart is so far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if someone's heart is far from the Qur'an, if someone's heart is far from that which is respectable and true, Allah is saying, do not despair. That land never dies. 
Land will always have the chance to survive if rain is going to fall on it. No matter how far your heart is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expose it to the revelation and it too will be awoken. How often do you read the Qur'an? How often do you expose your heart to the Qur'an? You know, we love to garden in Southern California. Gardening is a, something, it's a source of comfort. Many of us have backyards and we have front yards and we water our plants every single day. Or we water them every single week. And you could not go for like three months without watering your plants. You couldn't say, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to pour 20 gallons on, the, on, my, on my flower bed and this way this is enough for the next 20 days, right? No, you have to water it every single day. Or else the plants are going to die. This is the parable. Your heart needs wahi. Your heart needs Qur'an. Your heart needs the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad regularly. How much do you drink of it? How much do you water it with that? How much do you listen to the Qur'an? How much do you read the Qur'an? How much do you reflect over the Qur'an? How much do you read the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam? How much do you read about his life? The more you do it, the more your heart is going to grow. The more you do it, the more fruits that are going to come out of your, your actions. The more you do it, the more benefit you're going to find in your life. But, like I said, do not despair. If you are one of those individuals who the last time you opened the Qur'an was Ramadan, your heart may be very dry. But it's fine. Today you can start and Allah will bring life to that dead heart or that dried up heart. And so the, rem the reminder we get from this is when we see the rain, it's a reminder to us, Ya Allah, when you sent that rain, the land it benefits. When's the last time I exposed my heart to that rain from the heavens, which is the, which is the revelation? Did I read the Qur'an today? Did I expose myself to your remembrance? Did I do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so when Allah gives us rainfall, it's not just in a superficial sense that here's rain and it's nice. But there are so many benefits. Remind yourself about His power and His majesty. Remind yourself about resurrection. And you remind yourself that you also need to expose your heart to the revelation from the heavens. In closing, my dear brothers and sisters, we are upon a season in the winter where it might rain more often. Rejoice when it rains. Let your children play when it rains. Of course, if it's not too cold and will get them sick. Expose your body to it. Don't get upset if your day is a little bit you know, uh, out of rhythm because it rained. If you're sitting in the traffic, say, alhamdulillah, I'm going to make dua. It's raining and the freeway is not moving. Allah said my dua is answered in the rain. I'm going to make dua over and over and over for all the things that I want. Use it as a source of ha happiness, satisfaction, and an opportunity. You know, this last week we had Black Friday. Right? There was a set period of time where your deals were there. Think about the rain the same way. The rain is falling. During this time it falls, there is a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever I ask for, He's going to give me. And of course, remember the resurrection when it rains. And remember the revelation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the rains a means of a reminder for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the rains a means of forgiveness for us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from the rain. Before we close, a few announcements. Tonight is Family Friday, uh, Fun Night. There's a movie night that is for children and for adults. It begins at 7 o'clock p.m. Please come and bring your family. There will be halal hot dogs and nachos for, and popcorn for sale. This Sunday, there's a blood drive. The khutbah today was about rain, and rain is fundamentally important for life, but so is blood. And there are many people, young children and adults, who are in desperate need of blood for the different ailments they have. Save somebody's life. Come from 9 to 3 o'clock to the masjid, and please donate blood. Um, it will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last is thing, again, it goes back to our khutbah. The revelation is, the, the, uh, the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallam is revelation. And so expose yourself to that. And so every Wednesday, Sheikh Muhammad Baqi has his class, Prophetic Council, uh, at 7.30 p.m. Come to that class every week and expose your heart to the revelation, which is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah mahdina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma aatayt, inna ka taqadhi bil haqqi subhanak wa laikudu alayk, wa laka shukrana bi ma aatayt, nastaghfiruka Allah min jami'i dhunubi wal khataya wa natubu ilayk. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا اللهم وحد صفوفنا اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم مكن لدينك في الأرض وافتح له قلوب الناس Oh Allah we ask you to make us love the rain Allah we ask you to bless us with the rain 
Oh Lord, we ask you to make the rain a means of forgiveness for us. Oh Lord, we ask you to make our hearts turn to you in remembrance when the rain falls. Oh Lord, we ask you to be reminded of the resurrection when the rain falls. Oh Lord, we ask you to waken our hearts with your revelation the way that you give life to the land when it rains. Oh Lord, we ask you to forgive us of all of our shortcomings and our mistakes. Oh Lord, we ask you to, to forgive those amongst us who have passed away. Oh Lord, forgive our parents. Oh Lord, forgive our children. Forgive our spouses. Forgive our brothers and our sisters. Oh Allah, though you've gathered us here today, please gather us in the highest gardens of paradise so we may drink from the hands of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وأقيم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون